Leave the carcasses. We have enough meat. Back to the city. Ah. Noah. Building his ship. We have him under surveillance. Is he dangerous? He's a fool. Fools are dangerous. They think differently. Ah, but he doesn't think. Some clever old god told him to build his ship there. Let's go and talk to him. Will it really happen, Shem? <laughs> I know. All this for what? But Japheth, we don't hear what God says, and Father has never been wrong. He believes it, I know. But for God to drown the whole world? Is that godlike? God is just, and he may still weep at what is required. There has always been time for repentance. But who has repented? How much time is left? Ask these questions of the Lord God. I do not know the answers. But if creation is corrupted, may not the Creator put an end to it? So we should not question the Lord God? Yes, question, shout and weep and scream as I have done. But obey when the answer is clear, even if it is not to your liking. We are alone, whatever happens. We have no friends here now. And perhaps no youngest brother. Ham has not come back. Is it today? But can Ham bring every wild beast from the forest to the Ark? How? By magic? Look, someone's coming. Noah! Noah! Have you no respect for your governor? I will have respect for him when he has respect for my god. You realize, Noah, what I could do to you? I know what you have done to many others. And I know what God will do to you. <laughs> oh, yes. The drowning, the black engulfing waters. Is it not possible that you could be mistaken? I am a man, yes. I could be mistaken. But God... No. Oh, of course. God speaks to you. And says... He says that you have brought destruction upon yourselves. That you are envious, murderous, adulterous, and cruel. And what do you say? I say nothing. I listen. Captain! Was that bravery or foolishness? It was simply the truth, Atara. And now look, we have no need to go to the city to fetch fire. You're right. He's not dangerous. Only a madman would dare to speak to me like that. I'll have him brought in. No, it's not worth it. But the women, huh? <laughs> Did you see them? <laughs> look! Look! Japheth! Father! 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 They came! Didn't I tell you, Ham? They came! I did nothing! Yesterday, the birds and insects and all the small creatures were difficult, unwilling! Yes! But these! <laughs> Look at them now! It is finished, then? From tomorrow, the world will shrink to this wooden shell. Niyama and me, 
And you three with your wives. Where are they? Feeding the animals. And we'll water them. Ham? So, the world begins with us. By the grace of God. How did it start? I mean, at the very beginning. At the very beginning? There was nothing. Emptiness forever and ever. The earth was formless, featureless, unfinished. And then, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. He divided the light from the darkness. One he called day, the other night. That was the end of the first day. Next, God divided the waters, those that were under the heavens from those that were above. And that was the end of the second day. And then the stars appeared. Stars? No. Look! <laughs> oh, bring the light closer. They're afraid of the light. It's something else. The waters above the heavens. The Lord God has loosened them. are as featureless as the water drops. Twenty days and still it rains. Cities slide under our keel. We are gliding above the highest mountain. If I understand the beginning, I may understand this ending. You stopped your story at the end of the second day. Had there been an eye to see it, at the dawn of the third day, this is how the earth would have appeared. The Lord God gathered the waters together. And God said, let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land Earth, and the waters he called Seas. Then at his command, the Earth brought forth grass and herbs and flowers and trees. The night fell on the third day. At dawn on the fourth day, there was already a new creation. The sun. It warmed and fed the land like God himself. And when the evening came on the fourth day, the Lord God unveiled the stars and sailed the moon out between the clouds. And on the fifth day? God said, let the waters bring forth living creatures that move and have life. Still there was no sound but the wind, until by the evening of the fifth day, the sea and the sky were alive with new creatures, plunging and wheeling in their element. On the sixth day, God made all the living creatures that live on the earth. To crown his work, God said, I will create man and woman 
Let them be made in the image of God, their creator. Their names were Adam and Eve, created to revel in their God, to love and enjoy each other forever. And on the seventh day? God rested, as we shall do. But first, we must care for our animals. <sighs> How long? I want the air of that paradise you describe. Shh! Listen. What? What is it? Nothing. And yet I thought... I can't hear anything. That's it. What? The endless drumming is over. The rain has stopped. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, Japheth, you can get rid of that raven that provokes my wife so much. <laughs> yeah, let it go. It can come back to roost if it doesn't find land. <laughs> Poor creature. Nasty creature. <laughs> but cast out from all comfort. Like Lucifer from heaven. Lucifer. God's brightest angel. He has a part to play in this story. The courts of heaven. Dazzling, perfect. But Lucifer was not satisfied. As close to God as he could be, he wanted more. I will be greater. I will step further. Only one of a thousand thousand. Yes! Above the stars of God himself, I will be as the Most High! Your pride will be brought down to the grave. I cannot die. You can long to die. And you will. Michael, do not stand in my way. Down, Lucifer. Down to hell! What is this to do with paradise? Behind everything is darkness and light. The raven has not returned. More than a hundred days at sea and still no end to it. Send a dove. Free! What does that mean? She may fall exhausted and drown. She may choose to come back to the Ark. Is our prison part of her freedom? True freedom always has restraints. There is always a path not taken. Every free choice is a restraint from other choices. It was proved in Eden. Adam and Eve were free. They walked in a teeming world. Wishing to see nothing but this. Wishing to be nothing but themselves. The world was glad. When evening cooled the garden, the Lord God spoke with them, walked with them. Now in the middle of the garden, the Lord God planted a tree. It was laden with blossom and fruit, but it was different from every other tree he had made. This garden is yours. Taste and eat of all that is in it, except the fruit of this one tree, the tree of all knowledge, evil as well as good. Bite into that fruit, and on that day, death will begin to hunt you down. We will obey. What can prevent us? This pain, the burning, the agony, I must be free! of the morning. I will not dance at the throne of God. I will topple it. Let 
God fear me. Adam was at the riverside when Eve woke. She walked through the garden to find him. Not fearful. Why should she be? Eve. Eve, my child. You are the serpent. And you are the loveliest thing in a perfect garden. If only you knew it. <laughs> I do know it now. You have told me. Will you pick some fruit for us? Here. Not peaches today. What then? Something rare and delicate. There, in the middle. No, not that. No? Doesn't it make your mouth water and the scent of it? We may pick of any of the fruits of the garden. Well, of course. Except those. Those we must not touch. The Lord God has forbidden us. If God forbids this or that, Eden is no better than a prison. No, we are free. Well, if God has said you are free, then be free. Pick and eat. But if we eat the fruit of that tree, we will die. You will not die. Death is a big word. You don't understand it. But you could understand everything. Don't you want to be like that God you love so much? Like God? Yes. But you would rather be a slave. Does such a god need slaves? He asks for obedience. And would God have put the tree in the garden if it truly brought death? I cannot argue with God. Unless you taste the fruit. Why do I feel the world pulling against me? The air is thick. Cover yourself. From you or from God? What have we done? What are we to do? Why have you stopped? I thought perhaps it was no more than a thought. No! There! Feel it! There again! What is everyone seeing? This rotting, rocking world has hit some merciful snag! One day soon, by God's grace, you will smell hay, warm earth. Fresh timber. Yes. And will we ever eat fish or fig bread again? <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> but raisins. Cheese. Oh. Fresh vegetables. Yes. Look. And olives. There. The long days are nearly over. There is land somewhere close. Finish your story. While the floods drain. What did God do to them? He kept his promise. He gave them what they, in their freedom, had chosen. And the slow creep of death into their flawless world was fearful. The world shifts. 
shifts. Busy. I saw you once. Whole. Perfect. Now there are splinters in my eyes. Light. Harsh light. The day is at my throat. Are we dying? What is it to die? Escape from God. Escape from, escape from, escape from. We must escape. Adam. Eve. Tell me why you are hiding. We are... We are naked. You have always been naked. Why are you ashamed? You have eaten the fruit, my single commandment, and you have broken it. The serpent reasoned with me. He made me listen. We had no arguments. I did not give you the burden of understanding, only of obedience. Something has gone. Something I knew. That is a pain never to be shed. It is the mirror of mine. I feel the sting of your future and mine. Possessor. Shapeshifter. I know you. Hunt and be hunted. Crawl forever. Dragged in dust. Breaker of brightness. I made you a world. Now make your own. And will you curse me when it has no purpose, no beauty? The serpent has shed its skin. You must put on skins if you are ashamed. There is consolation in all that lies unused in your hearts. There will always be the memory of a memory. And there will be a way back. Are we the way? We may be part of it. You are as beautiful to me as Eve must have been to Adam. And you are the oldest man on Earth. Adam again. <laughs> Not so splendid, but just as prone to fail. Does the fruit still exist? Could we find it? Listen. The fruit had no power, no magic. It was the commandment that was important. And because the commandment was so easy to keep, the punishment was made so hard to bear. <laughs> you have a wise wife, Ham. Eat the fruit she offers you. We've built the altar. Then free those poor beasts. Will it ever be for us? We are always drawn to home. But you have heard the story. Home must be in heaven now, not anywhere on earth. Look. Settle in the land that I have given back to you. Never again will I destroy the earth with floods, but rain will give way to sun, and you will see my promise in the clouds. Springtime and harvest, Summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease as long as the earth endures. <laughs> <laughs>